Well, I would say good morning, everybody, but it's Friday morning, so we have at least one follower, which is fantastic. <laughs> We've got two, excellent. Right, we're good. So, hi, I'm Larry Rye. I am the head of solution engineering for Multiplay. And over here, I have my right-hand man. This is Curtis Anderson. Good he morning. He is our senior solution engineer. But basically, I just have a premise to start off the day. We think game launches are difficult. My audience base is low. But can I have a show of hands if you also believe this is the same? <laughs> Hooray! Excellent. Right, so we think game launches should be boring. By boring, I don't mean for the players that are coming to play the game, but for all of your internal teams that are having to look after those servers. You don't want to have a bad launch day. You don't want to have outages. So we mean from an operational point of view. Your success is ultimately our success. And what I mean by that is that we are intrinsically linked to the overall solutions that you have to use to bring players into games. But without you guys, we wouldn't be needed. So essentially, your success is our success. We have over 20 years of experience building and deploying custom infrastructure and scalable infrastructure for our customers. We have a purpose-built orchestration tool set that has been built over that 20-year period. And actually, when I say purpose-built, it's been purpose-built to be fixing real-world problems. We've worked with over 500 different games over that 20-year period, both integrating them and also migrating them. And actually, that's taught us a lot of things. It's taught us how to do things right. And that's a bit of a bold statement to do, or to say. But actually, we, we've made a lot of learnings, and we constantly integrate that into our platform to make sure that we provide that level of experience to you as our customers. Everything we do is engine agnostic. And we have global data center coverage, a multi-cloud implementation, and we provide flawless launch experiences to our customers, scaling with the demands of your players. Now, this talk is about scaling with multiplayer to millions of users. Well, funnily enough, we've just done that with Apex Legends. And when we were at peak, we were scaling over 3,000 cores per minute. That's quite an impressive feat to make sure that we could stay ahead of that player demand. And we deliver a consistent experience no matter what. So we're always looking to make sure that every learning that we have, we put back into the platform to improve that experience overall. And actually, every multiplayer game is a complex solution. So we are only one part of that. There is all these other systems that are inextricably linked together that come together as a bigger whole. Uh, this is why when it comes to solution design, we don't just focus on going, we've got one product and that's all you should use. Actually, we're going, right, if you're crazy enough to want to build all of this on your own, we do infrastructure as a service. But actually, what we want you to do is use our hybrid scaling system because of that's the thing that makes sure your players can always get a game. With that, I'm going to pass over to Kurt. Here Thank you very go. much. So we've got a bit of audience participation here. This is a QR code that basically turns all of you into a matchmaker. So when you scan it, it's the equivalent of sending a session to a live fleet and sending a, a request for a, a game server. So I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to scan it, uh, and we'll look at the results a little bit later on. More scans, the better. So I'm just going to hit reload like a right, okay. thousand that, times. That works fine. So. We've got two models to scale. We've got allocations and reservations. So allocations is what Apex Legends uses. It's very proactive. It's suited to matchmaking. Reservations is suited to um, server browser style games. So games that don't have a centralized service, games that support drop-ins, not like complete sessions end to end, and also it, it supports games that allow uh, the players to configure the session when they join. So if, a, if your player contains a, uh, in a matchmaking experience, contains a game type, such so as a deathmatch, you can figure that on start with the reservations. So we decided to use the very widely adopted uh, API illustration tool called WhatsApp to show you what the different models do and how they behave. So what's happening here? On the, on the left-hand side is the allocate. That's the request. That's the QR code. So you're asking multiplayer. You're saying, 
I would like a game server, please. I would like this configuration. And because our API is a little rude, it's restful, you have to ask again for the detail. So can I have the IP import? After that, we provide the details for the matchmaker, which you then can pass to the players, and they can start playing. At the end of that process is the deallocate. So the deallocate is where you get rid of the session. You say, I'm done with it. It's ready to be reused. So for reservations, which is the other model, it's very, um, how, how do I say, you're, you're waiting. We're waiting to see what happens. We've got game servers running, just like allocations. They're ready to be used, but we're reacting to that. So when a, game, uh, a player joins a game session, we let our scaling system know that it's in use, and then we scale up as a result. So here we've got two real world models. We've got allocations on the left and reservations on the right. Now these are two real world models from real games. So they're not exactly the same in regards to their trending. But you can see the allocation model is, is far neat to graph and the reservations is not as neat. And I'll explain why. So the green line is the in-use game server instances. The yellow line is the running capacity, and the dotted yellow line is the transition between bare metal and cloud instances. And the purple line is the overall fleet capacity. So I'm going to hand back to Larry to talk a little bit about the warm capacity. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah, I put away my phone and stopped allocating. So yeah, so basically, when we're talking about warm state, what we're talking about is we're actually creating a buffer for these game servers to use. It's one of those things where actually you don't want to have to spin up, provision, QA, and deploy to a cloud server every time you want to use it. You need to create a buffer. And with that buffer, we are able to sidestep all of those additional steps, make sure that the machine is ready for use as you need it. And that means we can bring that back online when your players demand that additional capacity. And we're always making sure to keep those patched with the latest uh, profile versions or game versions that we deploy. And yeah, really, that's about it. That's the warm state. Back to you, Kurt. There you go. Yep, thank you. Back to allocating. So there are some differences, obviously. So the, the yellow line isn't trending back down. That's because we're not in control of where we place the sessions. We're reacting to it. Allocations is very formal. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but reservations, as you can see, does downtrend, but it's slightly slower. So let's look at how both of the models work. Um, there's a few different requirements for the scaler, but we're only going to actually look at one of the requirements at the moment, which is minavail or minavailable. So it's the concept of having game server instances waiting for use. So let's see what happens. So as the fleet scales up onto bare metal, we can see that the min available is not four anymore. It's not available. So we get cloud instances as a result. So for reservations, we're not in control. There is, that, there is no concept of a hot box to prioritize the ordering. So we've got a very fragmented state to begin with. So let's see what happens. So we're still scaling based on minimum available. So when minimum available is not valid, we gain a cloud instance. But you can see that that instance that is in the, in the bare metal machine could be on that bare metal machine. We didn't need to scale. So how about the reverse? How about scaling down? So allocation scale down is formal for the same reason the scale up is formal, the concept of this hot box. So let's see what happens. So as the instance is cleared down, we're, we're ordering. We're ordering the new ones that are coming in so we can clearly drop that cloud machine and make very efficient use of the fleet. 
For the reservation scale down, however, we have a very fragmented uh, instances over the both the bare metal and cloud. So let's see what happens. So we get the same result in the end, but it's a very fragmented step. We're waiting on sessions to finish. In fact, if you had an AFK player sitting in a cloud machine, it could keep it online. So, so the thing is that the fragmentation with reservations can actually be mitigated in a number of ways. So because you're not using a centralized service, we can pass through some information to the actual game server process to say that it's on bare metal or cloud. How you ingest that information to direct players towards the right instance is up to you, but this heavily reduces the fragmentation. The other thing to note about reservations is that because allocations requires a matchmaking service and reservations does not, the barrier to entry is insanely low to get started. In fact, you gain 90% of the benefit of the whole scaling platform and such features like zero downtime patching with three API call in, uh, implemented. So here's some more QR codes. So I want everybody to scan some more times. So the green is the allocate that we just talked about. The red is the deallocate. So you feel free to scan each one you like, scan up and scan down. We'll have a look in a little bit. So we're going to tell you a little bit how the game servers actually work. So how do we control these individual sessions on all these different machines? So game servers operate on multiplayer very much like a container. Each one has a static ID that can be referenced and manipulated uh, by an API or by a UI. And each one is created dynamically when a cloud or a bare metal machine gets inserted into the fleet. Every game server is also monitored and profiled dynamically on the machine. And that is done by a system called Query, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. But we can look at the CPU usage, for example, and compare that to the player count dynamically every few seconds. So game servers are also controlled by a profile. A profile is like a configuration set. It's a detailed list of instructions and behavior that we expect from the game server. And it can be used in a variety of ways. The most common way is to dictate different builds or versions that it supports. For example, PlayStation or PS4 can be controlled by different profiles. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I can take this over. So, the nice thing about our platform is you don't need to start big. Actually, you can start very small. And when it comes to getting started, you can actually just have a single bare metal machine per region, two cloud accounts as a primary and a secondary. So we would use GCP for our primary typically, and we'd use AWS as our secondary. And then you need a build box as well. That build box is there to look after the entire sort of patching state, it's there to do differential analysis, it does, it does a whole bunch of things, but actually it's very small deployment to get started. You might be thinking by now with all of the relevant terms and random terms we've been throwing around, it might be quite difficult to implement this type of technology. Thankfully not. Actually what we do is we do a custom integration with our customers. We take a compiled game server binary, there's no SDK, there's no complicated set of manuals and documentation. All you need is three API calls in able to be able to scale up and back down. And you need a subset of those to scale back down, sorry. Um, what we do is an evaluation of that game server to find out what makes it tick. We're looking for the ability to bind the IP, the port, and the configuration path at the command line, because of that will allow us to control the instance's inst instantiation, and also its spin down as well. The other really nice thing that we, we don't require, but it's one of those nice to have because it adds additional granularity to the way that we can move the scale up and down is query. And when we say query, we mean an open port that's ready to receive a little UDP packet to authenticate and then send back its information. Something along the lines of how many players there are in a session, what's the maximum amount of players in the session, what map they're on, what game mode. 
With that piece of information, we're able to use that for our health monitoring and recovery system. We're able to use it for granular scaling. There's so many different things that Query can provide. Um, but it's all based around something like an A2S protocol, which is a Valve standard, or there are other standards that we're developing in-house as well called SQP, which is the server query protocol. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say here is if you want to get started with us, you just send us a game server binary and we do a lot of the work for you, and then we do all the teaching with you as well. So I'm going to hand back to Kurt for something that's a little bit risky, and that's a live demo of what you guys have been scanning so far. Thanks, Larry. So, yeah, so... It's a bit risky to do a live demo, but we're going to try. So, oh, look at that. So these are all the uh, allocations that you guys have been doing over the uh, course of the presentation. Uh, and there is a deallocate QR code. So feel free to deallocate and get rid of those uh, allocations down. So. The one thing I'll, I'll add here as well is we're graphing this a lot faster than we should be, so we're probably <laughs> really annoying our engineering team. So if the line wavers or flicks down to zero, that's because we've polled it too <laughs> frequently. So with that, has anybody got any questions for us? If you want to know more, there are detailed guides for both allocations and the reservations model that you can scan here. Uh, and that will give you some contextual information on how to get started, what to look for, uh, and th how the different models work. It's all human readable uh, with diagrams and everything ready to go. Sure, there's no question. Oh, I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Any more questions? Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much.